It is a lovely morning in the Lake District. Come back to the same place as it was in the last video, which is here, but in the morning to hopefully catch the waterfall at the disused or abandoned quarry. A lot more light on it. There's the last video. As you'll see, the sun was setting behind it. So it really was, it was in shade, it was dark, there wasn't, it wasn't illuminated nice, the light wasn't that great either, even, even with the setting sun. So we come back the following day, in the morning, to, uh, to give it another go, capture it in different light. Let's see how we get on. So here we are again, back at Banish Head Quarry. This is the morning after the night before type of thing. And unfortunately, as you can see behind me, there's a huge bank of cloud obscuring the sun. So that hope of getting this scene illuminated by the, by the sun looks like it's not gonna happen. Which is a damn shame. Uh, what I might do is just have a wee wander around and see, uh, check out for, for possible various various views and see if there's anything I missed from yesterday that I could, could make the most of. I guess and the sky is quite nice there's just absolutely zero sun so what I might do I might take this opportunity to shoot from over here which is right of where we were yesterday or where we were in the last video again because we've got quite nice soft light on the hillside which is kind of behind me here all in that area um, a nice soft sky and we can still get the waterfall in here so I think I think that's the plan of action slightly different composition from the last visit we'll just keep on wondering and see if there's anything else we can see and else we can do Just a bit of a walk through the setup. Got the polarizer back on, uh, bracked in the shot as well as normal. Um, I've got the ISO down to L, which is 50 in the Canon 5D, and um, f stops at 16. Again, it's just to slow things down a wee bit. Uh, it is getting quite bright, and uh, so we've got the exposure at two and a half seconds for the for the main exposure then the variations after that because of the the bracketing that I'm using and I've also as you can see I've got a couple of filters in the front this is just because of the variation of the darkness down below here it's dark water dark rock and then I've also got the the bright sky as well so this is just to compensate for that so it doesn't it's got more control of the image so it's a 0.9 and a 0.6 I've got various various depths, various uh, heights, as you can see they're slightly off. And uh, just to make that graduation a wee bit smoother. And so yes, yeah, so I've done a couple of shots there, they're looking fine. What I might do now is uh, 
put the put the camera in portrait mode and do a do a panel. So that'll take me a while just to set up because I have to get the, the tripod bang straight as well so when you do pivot round it doesn't drop off or climb uh, which you end up losing quite a bit of your image uh, when you do blend the images together. So I'll go and do that now. Uh, again it's just to capture a wee bit more of the scenery around here. I have got the the 17 to 40 L lens on and set at set at 17. But again there's still some quite neat nice sweeping hills over there and it could uh, it could finish nice with the, the waterfall just in the, the edge of the frame um, so I'll go and do that now yeah so that's as good to go balanced up the or leveled off the tripod uh, that way when you do pan round like so it's as straight as possible and it doesn't tail off uh, I've taken the polarizer off because polarizer is going to be a bit of a nightmare when you're doing uh, uh, panels it's just, it just it, you know, it affects the light very differently. So every time you move around, that slight change is quite apparent, and you can get kind of blend, uh, banding and weird lines in a in a panel. I've also taken one of the the graduated filters off, just for exactly the same reason. It can cause havoc going around. Uh, there's going to be some areas that are going to be darker because that's you know really doubling up with the the, the drop of the exposure, the drop of the light coming into the camera. But I've left one on. And what I'm going to do, every one, every shot, every position, I'm going to do three shots. So I'm, I'm going to bracket every shot, bring the brackets together to get a single image, and then after that, blend them all together so you get a panel of, uh, of the area. So just one, just to kind of kill off some of the brightness in the sky, because again, most of the foreground is quite dark in comparison. So it's just a bit of control there, but I'm opening up the, the bracketing quite a bit, so I've got a quite a lot of range to play with when it comes to the post-processing job. Nice one, that's worked out well. Uh, what we'll do, we'll take them back into the computer and do a bit of, a bit of blending, a bit of HDRing and a bit of panoing and hopefully come up with some nice, uh, nice scene. So let's, uh, let's see how that looks. Yeah, so I had to work at that image quite a bit, trying different things because the the hoped for morning sun didn't really materialise. So it was, uh, in all honesty, the conditions weren't too dissimilar to when the last time I was here in the last video. Slightly brighter, um, but uh, so yeah, I had to work at compositions different, look for the different areas, different uh, viewpoint. So it was slightly further around, I'm trying to show you from here. I was just perched just, just in where my finger is right there. Whereas this time I was further around up towards there. Uh, again, just to get a different perspective, uh, the, the sky is nice, but cloudy and dull, but it's got some lovely streaks to it. So hopefully with uh, the, the graduated filter, you know, emphasizing that in the sky and the fact that I did uh, bracketing, three stop bracketing, just to get as much information as possible because there's a whole load of uh, dynamic range in that shot from the bright skies to the the dark the dark water the and the dark rocks so hopefully worked out something there and of course the the panel as well just for a wee bit of variation had the time and some of the nicer skies were out of shot when i was just using it at 17 mil that my lens so i thought well let's go let's go panel and let's get uh, as much as as much of the the surrounding hillside and farm life in as much as possible. Right. So that's that. Uh, 
What I'll probably do is just keep an eye on the weather for the next wee while just to see if there's a possibility of coming back and doing that shot again. So I really think it's um, it, it needs bright skies, uh, something something to really illuminate the the waterfall and the the, the tarn or the man-made tarn. But right now I'm going to head back, uh, have some breakfast. This was all in the back of an app called Trover. It's well worth checking out. It was. Um, it's got a kind of grown popularity, especially amongst uh, just the photographers of the world, and it is worldwide. It's throughout. Uh, I use. I've just started using it. I really need to build up my uh, presence on it quite a bit. If you do enjoy my videos, please like and subscribe. Uh, leave any comments if there's any places around here that you know of that's really great to photograph. Uh, so I do come down to the Lake District quite frequently, uh, so I shall make make the most of any comments and try and find new places to photograph. But I'll leave you now and uh, either see you back at the computer for editing or I'll catch you in the next video. Alright, take care, cheers!